March was billed as a vital month for Argyle and it hasn't been too bad so far, has it? Good evening and welcome back to Argyle TV. It's me, Erin. I am back. Did you miss me? Back again after my two-match ban for an illegal tackle on Pilgrim Pete. Uh, I wish. Unfortunately, I had COVID, um, but I'm pleased to say COVID no more. Uh, I am negative, which is very handy for Brian McGlinchey, who stood next to me and will be joining us on screen in just a moment. Uh, for those of you who may be watching Argyle TV this evening from your homes because you have have COVID or anything like that. Um, I am with you. I know exactly what you're going through. And thank you very much for joining us. And I hope we can bring you a nice evening of entertainment here at Home Park this evening. And it's been a pretty good month for Argyle so far. Five wins, five clean sheets, and we are now up to fourth in the table. Tonight, Argyle are playing Cheltenham Town. Our game is in hand and we should make it six straight wins. We'd be five points off the automatic promotion spots. Can we dream? I don't know. Let's ask Brian McGlinchey, who joins us this evening. Brian, first of all, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, good. And and can we dream? How are you feeling coming into this game this evening after what we've seen so far? Yeah, massively optimistic. I think the fact that the clean sheets as well has been really, really impressive. So yeah, um, yeah, I, th I think the, the 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 club and the team should be really positive. Embrace this. This is a massive opportunity. You know, the crowds will be here again tonight, and uh, yeah, I'm really really positive about how the I think the season will end. I really do. I think we're on the right sort of right vein of form. And as a former defender yourself, the the clean sheet aspect of what Argyle have been you know showing us for for the past few games must be you know quite good for them. Yeah, well, any promotion push is, is definitely built on foundations of not conceding goals. So the fact that the team have demonstrated they can do that, I think the defensive recruitment this summer is is pay dividends. Yeah. I think it's really. Really, really been the bedrock of the the performances this year, and it, and defending starts from the front. Really, you know, all the team put a shift in. So yeah, massive, massive uh, attribute to have. Mm. And can you believe the run that we've had so far? I mean, it we you know we saw similar towards the beginning of the season, yeah. and you know having such a good form towards the end as well is obviously something that's so important. Can you believe that Argyle have just been building and building and building? I can't believe it because I think this team have proved that they that they 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 can cope with this. They, yeah. they, I think they've they're not like just a flash in the pan. They've, they've done it throughout the whole season, and and the benefit we've got is got so many home games as well. So that will really add to the spice. So yeah. Pilgrim Pete's coming oh, in here. Speaking of adding yeah, to the yeah, spice, yeah. is none other Good than timing. Pilgrim Pete. How are you doing, Pete? 
Okay, rubbing his hands together, we're saying 3-0. Perfect, that's what I like to see. Um, off Pete goes to terrorise some other poor, unsuspecting individual. Um, Brian, do you think the form can continue as well? Do Argyle need to you know, make sure they're not resting on their laurels coming into tonight and the games going forward? 100%. I think when you listen to the manager, he'll never let that happen. He's yeah. not thinking about three, four games ahead. He's thinking of tonight and tonight only. And I don't think he'll allow that. I saw his comments after the game um, at, at the weekend. Whilst it was a good victory, there were still areas that he thought he, the team could improve. Yeah. And that's for me, is the, the sign of a really good manager and a good, good sign for the team. So, yeah. Yeah. And this will continue another lovely Tuesday night here under the lights at Home Park. It must mean, you know, especially coming into kind of spring, summer, nice yeah. weather we're having this week as well and having the stadium packed with fans. Yeah. The atmosphere as well is fantastic, isn't it, for the yeah, team? Yeah, I, I did the commentary of the, the, the Pompey game and that, the atmosphere was just yeah. bouncing then. It was just a privilege to be here, to be honest. So I'd expect the same tonight, to be honest. I think the run-in will be brilliant. The players, you know, have got lots of games coming thick and fast, so they just enjoy the, enjoy the crowd. For me, as a player, you want to play in these games. Yes, there's pressure, but that's what, that's what you thrive off. Yeah, absolutely. So let's have a look back at one of the games that we've had recently. Obviously, some team news coming in a moment, but let's uh, make the most of Saturday's win over Accrington.
great to look back at Argyle's win over Accrington there. Uh, one of many wins that they've been having in recent times. And now let's turn our attention to the lineup for this evening, which will be on your screen for you. Playing in Argyle's starting 11 today is Michael Cooper, James Bolton, Macaulay Gillespie, Jordan Houghton, James Wilson, Ryan Broom, Joe Edwards, Ryan Hardy, Danny Mayer, Niall Ennis and Connor Grant. A couple of changes there. Uh, for example, Ryan Broom now starting and we've got the likes of Luke Jeffcott and Panucci Kamara away on international duty, which means we see um, one new addition to the bench in particular, which is Freddie Asaka, Argyle's youngest player. What do you make of the, the lineup you're seeing so far, Brian? Um, it's probably the lineup that I predicted, to be honest. Um, I Obviously, uh, Kamara away. I thought Broom, he's, he's, he's played Broom in a couple of away games, so... Yeah. Brim and Mayer in the middle of the park. It's 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 courageous. It's he wants to win the game. You can tell from that. I think Ennis, you know, he's, he's real you no know, prolific goal scorer alongside you know, Hardy. He's had a fantastic season. So uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's the, a really strong lineup. Mm -hmm. And Argyle quite fortunate really in that whatever kind of formation they tend to play, there is always a strong lineup to choose from. Do you think that really helps having yeah. you know different options? Yeah, particularly up front. They've got massive options up front. They yeah. can they can make managers think. You know, they don't know which two they're going to go up with. You know, obviously, Hardy's been the, probably the mainstayer, but whoever joins him is you know, making managers think because they've all got different strengths. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a conundrum for opposing managers to work out. So they've got an hour before the kickoff when they get the team sheets to work it out. So, yeah. But, yeah, it's a good, really good squad, a lot of depth there, really good bench. And you, you said Freddie Zaka. That's pretty impressive to be on the bench yeah. in a league game as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, the defence has been getting a lot of plaudits, Brian, which we'll obviously want to talk to you about in just a minute. But you're mentioning uh, the strikers and Ryan Hardy in particular. He has four in his last five games. What yeah. do you make of that? Yeah, amazing. I think, he's a, I think obviously, he had a really awful missing the penalty at Chelsea. Yeah. But I think for him, that, that courage, I think he went away to... Crew, I believe, I think, or maybe it's fleet. I'm not too sure, but yeah. he went and scored a, a, you know, a couple of goals yeah. after that yeah, really quickly. Hat trick, wasn't after, it? Yeah. yeah. So, I think he's shown really, you know, great, great temperament, great mental strength to come through that, and shown what a good player he is, and he's been invaluable, hasn't he? Yeah. We need his goals between now and the end <laughs> of the season as well. Absolutely. And Niall Ennis is playing with him today. Uh, like you said. Ryan seems to be kind of the mainstay and then everyone else, you can kind of rotate the players around him. They work in all sorts of different yeah. different pairs. What do you think uh, Niall and Ryan will, will bring to the game tonight? Obviously, Hardy likes to run into channels in behind. I think Ennis is very good at getting the ball to feet and turning with the ball. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think they all link up really well. They understand the strengths. They've, you know, they've had the same sort of squad now for, for quite a while, th those four. So and I think they just understand their game and they can play to each other's strengths. So... Yeah, whatever team he picks, I think they can they can work to that. And I'm sure the manager's working and training as well to, to get the best out of these teams. Yeah, and another player we have to mention who's been on top form recently is Danny Mayer. Uh, how much easier do you think life is in on the Argyle side having yeah. Danny Mayer in with them on the pitch? I, 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 I've called it before. I think he's probably the best player on his day in the division. I really yeah. do. He makes things happen. You look at the goals at the weekend. You know, two crosses. He was, he was you know he was very pivotal to that. But yeah, he's got great feet. He makes things happen. He's just that bit of quality. He, he, he sort of can beat a player and make things make, make things happen, as I say. So, yeah, hopefully he'll be in good form tonight as well and uh, and, and get some sort of good movements for free strikers and get some chances made. Yeah, he certainly brings uh, an extra element to the game. You know, he's one of the players that you like to watch just to see how they play. How important is it, do you think, you know, just for the fans in the stadium to know that the Argyle squad, in whatever kind of formation they'll take, they're, they're usually always going to see a, a dynamic and an interesting game. Yeah, I think they want to play a nice track of football on the front foot, make things happen. They like to switch the ball from right to left very, very, very quickly. And Mayor, as you say, wants to get on the ball and make things happen. So, yeah, very attractive team to watch, good to watch. And uh, and you, uh, I was reading comments of the uh, Cowley, the Pompey manager. He's very, very sort of positive about w w w how good Argyle were. and. Yeah. The recruitment they did, they sign players to fit their formation. They don't just sign, you know, individuals. They sign, they sign a strategic, yeah. the recruitment strategic. So, yeah, good signs. Yeah. And it's quite apparent that, you know, other teams, other managers are paying attention to what Argyle are doing. Do you think the other teams uh, fear Argyle a little bit? Um, obviously, they, they will because I've seen a lot of teams come here and change their formation, which is a real, real sort of feather in Argyle's cap. I don't think the manager will be thinking like that. I think he'll be just thinking about what his team do, and rightly so. You know, they've got they're the home team, they're the, the quality team. So it's all about them imposing themselves in the game and making it happen. 
So yeah, teams will respect Argyle now. They've proved that through the through the season so far. Yeah. So yeah, but as I say, this manager won't get carried away. Yeah. And the squad just coming out onto the pitch now behind us as me and Brian are talking. Uh, met with nice smattering of applause to the fans that are already in the stadium there will be plenty more coming in as the evening continues now looking over to the defense obviously as a defender yourself brian why do you think the dynamic that they've got at the minute is working so well i think first and foremost they're, they're good footballers i think that's that's the that's what's easy to say it but does help. it does help yeah <laughs> but i think the, recru the the actual recruitment's been really good good players good communication um, and good competition for places. No Scar has had an amazing season. He's gone out with a hamstring injury. I yeah. think he's just come back training now. But you know, Bolton's come in. So yeah, good competition for places. Just good players communicate well. And I think they're of the right age as well. I think last year we had a lot of younger players on loan in, the, in those pivotal positions that didn't didn't help us really. So good experience in there. So yeah, essentially good recruitment, good players, and 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 probably a lot of training ground stuff yeah. that you don't see as well. Yeah. That uh, that they probably worked a lot on, on their shape to, to making sure defensively and also I have to say there's a little bit of luck involved yeah you need a bit of luck with opposing teams have hit the post on a few home games recently so yeah, that is true. but you need that yeah you well need that. speaking of luck let's hope it continues and let's have a little look at the league table shall we so if we win today five points off the top uh you know, could we, uh, could, off the top two even, we, we, we could do it possibly. Let's have a look. Uh, the last six games, they'll see us play Oxford, Sunderland, Wickham, Wigan, MK Dons. Uh, Brian, how important do you think today will be in, you know, knowing the other teams that we've got left to play towards the end of the league? Um, well, yeah, it's important that, you know, we get a, a good result tonight and it sort of puts a bit of distance between the teams below us. Um, but I, 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 generally, I generally mean this. I think the manager won't be thinking like that. Okay. I think he has to think about tonight and tonight only. Um, there's a lot of games to play for. We've got ga we've got games with teams in and around us, haven't we? After after this, so yeah, it's going to be a tough run in. Yeah. But I think we're we're well placed. We've got full of confidence, and yeah, I think he'll just take each day, game as it comes. Because I think if you start thinking I'm going to get a result tonight, and and thinking like that, then you, you know, that's when the can, football can come back and bite you. So I think he'll be very very grounded. Yeah, I was going to say, sh I, you know, we, we can see the clubs that we've got ahead of us. You know, Oxford, one of the ones coming up sooner, Sunderland, Wickham. They are, you know, really big teams. If you end up focusing too much on the team itself rather than like what you're saying, which is just each game at a time, yeah. do you kind of run the risk that you end up possibly tripping over yourself and, and shooting yourself in the foot before you get somewhere? Yeah, well, you hear all the best managers. They don't get they don't get carried away. The next game is the most important game, and, and that's what the manager will be thinking. Um, but you know, you're, you're right. This is this is a big game in the sense it will give a bit of daylight between the other teams, um, and they've sent a message. And if they get another result tonight and a clean sheet, it's a really big message. There'll be teams coming here, you know, f you know nervous, you know, because they'll have to come and get a result here. So. Yeah, so it's, but I think, as I say, the manager will not let that, yeah. won't, won't let the dressing room get carried away. Yeah, I suppose it's easy to look at some of the bigger teams and, and worry about them coming here. But similarly, with the run that Argyle are on at the moment, it's highly likely that they are doing exactly the same thing. Um, where, like, who do you see finishing in, in, the, in the top places in the league if, if you oh, came down? That's, you know? that's a tricky question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, th I think, I think, uh, Trying to look at the table earlier, I think uh, Sunderland's going to be in and around there. Yeah. Um, you, you see Wickham coming in behind as well. So Wickham's a, you know, they're they're one of our bogey teams. We have some, <laughs> some, some some dodgy games with them. So yeah. um, I think it's between you know them coming into the mix as well. So what you say, it's, it's four from six really for me that uh, out of those teams. So, but you know, as I say, uh, and I'm, I'm being boring and a bit of cliches here. I, I don't think the manager will be thinking like that. Yeah. It's in our hands. If we win, if we win enough games, we'll be in the in, in the sort of at least the playoffs. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's just a long way to go still. I yeah. know it seems the season's what eight games to go. Is that right? Eight nine. I think yeah, yeah that's eight so. games I to go. I remember a couple of games ago, I was saying eleven. Okay, so so I think <laughs> it is. I think it is eight. I think so. Yeah, so a lot of points to play for. Yeah, and and speaking of points, I know you know you you've made this point about Stephen Schumacher not wanting to concentrate on anything other than e each game as it comes. But do you think looking at the table and you know the the points that teams have, will there be like a particular tally that Argar will you know want to be aiming for points wise, or is it really kind of just still all in the air yeah, and it's I'm not I'm necessarily sure, I'm about sure, that? I'm sure in his head there's a between him and the coaching staff there's a tally yeah. that he's seen over the years what gets you in the playoffs 
Um, but let's be honest, I think, I was trying to do the maths, 95 points they could probably get. Okay. I think that's, a probably, that's where he's probably trying to get to. That's the, what, for me, that's the, the mentality they have to have. And then, then you work from there, really. It's just try and win every game you play. Yeah. So, but I'm sure between him, secretly, and the coaching staff, they'll be thinking, this is where we need to get to. So, you know, you're talking, you know, high 70s in the 80s, you know, that yeah. type of mark, really, because yeah. it's, uh, it's a tough old league. This. Yeah. You know. I mean, when you you know when you see the fans at halftime and stuff, they're always avidly checking their phones, seeing how the the, the league table is yeah. standing, seeing how the scores are for the match. But you know, when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, you just want to come and enjoy a, a good game, don't you? Yeah, from a fan perspective, they'll be yeah. not what they want to see, but they want to see the team win, and uh, and and, and w- winning's the right mentality to have, and that that courage to go and win games. So the managers, I think, since he's come in, he's he's been a breath of fresh air. He's been fantastic. Yeah. I, I've got a lot of time for him, and. Uh, and I just hope the the club, you know, at least get in our playoffs, and we see some big games here in a, in a playoff, and maybe even get the Wembley. Yeah, great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we are just over half an hour away from kickoff now here at Home Park, and you can watch it all on Argyle TV. Now, it's also been a good weekend for the academy side here at Argyle. On Saturday, they kept up their winning start to life in Merit League One. They made it three from three with a 2-0 win over Exeter City. Here are the highlights. Jeff for QO and Kieran Edworthy with the goals in that clip there. And it was also an equally good weekend for the women's side who won their fourth game in a row. They beat MK Dons 5-1 at the Manadon Sports Hub to help uh, their relegation worries.
Uh, superb performance from the girls. Um, we come here with a game plan today. They've executed it superbly and full credit goes to the girls. It was a superb performance from start to finish. As you said, the girls executed the game plan really well. I think today we were very clinical, which we haven't always been that season, uh, this season. How good was it to see that today in such a key game? Well, I think the confidence is running through the team. We've performed really well since Christmas. We've won seven out of nine now. We are taking our chances more regularly than we did before Christmas. Um, and you can just see the confidence is running through the girls. So he's had a cracking shot, snapshot from 25 yards and scored. Um, Tash is clinical, I think that's six or seven and seven for her. So um, yeah, yeah, it's just nice. And again, lots of different goal scorers. So yeah, really happy the confidence in the camps. Um, high at the minute. I mean, you keep building that momentum. We're, we've leapfrogged Cardiff today. Um, with them losing to Southampton and we've got a tough game next week against um, Ipswich but um, the girls are going to go there in full confidence. As you said we've moved from Cardiff and we've four points to the Red Dons today. Um, how big did that mean at the end of the season? Oh, it's a massive three points. Um, we tried to play down the fixture to the girls to not put too much pressure on them. Um, but I think they dealt with the pressure today really well. Um, they showed character um, and they've worked hard for each other and fully deserves to be where they are in the league and like you say we're we're four points behind Portsmouth now, we're five behind London Bees with three games in hand, so why can't we keep moving up the table and keep getting the points and see where we can finish at the end of the season? And it was, I think, Poppy's last game for a state she goes to Chelsea full time. Um, how proud are you of her, are you, and how happy are you with her performance today? Oh, Poppy's fantastic, she's been superb for us since she's come to the club. Um, we had a difficult season with her uh, last season and she's kept the score lines down. Um, and we wish Poppy all the best at Chelsea. Um, it's a big loss, but we've um, brought in Jazz, and Jazz is a very good goalkeeper, so um, we're confident that we can keep going. But yeah, Poppy is going to be a big loss in this squad, but we wish all the best. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers, Dan. Uh, so, Poppy, we just be entered on to 5 1. Uh, how did you find the game today? Uh, good, yeah, it was a challenging start. We knew it was an important game. Uh, it was a game we had to win if we wanted to stay up, um, so we knew that going into it. Uh, Gills play brilliantly, it's the best I've seen them play all season, I think, and with the, the pressure on today, it was incredible to see us get the result. I think today might be your last game for us, unfortunately. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be perfect for the clean sheet, but it's still a pretty great win to go out on. Yeah, I would have been would have been happier with the clean sheet, but it's not always going to go perfectly. Uh, the three points is great to take away, and I'm happy to lead the team with that three points. Um, it's been a great season so far. I really do wish them the best of luck, and hopefully, we can stay up and challenge a bit, a bit more next year. And you're moving on to Chelsea with a fully pro deal. How, how exciting is that? For you? Uh, yeah, really exciting. Obviously, things are a bit up in the air at the moment, um, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So, yeah, really happy. Poppy Soper and Ryan Perks there talking about their thrilling 5-1 win. Welcome back. You are watching Argyle TV. Let's take a look now at our visitors this evening, Cheltenham Town. They have won their last two games and they're up to 12th in the league. Uh, and the latest of those wins was at home to AFC Wimbledon on the weekend.
clip of Cheltenham Town playing there. What do you make of the season they've had so far, Brian? Yeah, it's been a real steady season. Oh, they're on 50 points, mid-table side. They've done really well for, for a newly promoted side. Yeah. Uh, I think Duff's done a really good job. You know, he's, uh, he's been there quite a while now and uh, he's got yeah, he's got a young youngish side there. So, yeah, he, he's, he needs a few plaudits for, for doing a decent job. Yeah, and, you know, being promoted the season before to be where they are in the table now, do you think that's kind of a, that, that that's someone they'll, they'll be happy with? Oh, most, most definitely. I yeah. think you look at the pedigree of some of the, the, the teams in this division. It's a real tough division. Some big clubs in this division. So I would guess, not knowing, but I would guess their budget's nowhere near some of the teams in the, in this division. So for them to hold their own, yeah. um, they're a bit of a draw specialist. Cheltenham, they've drawn a lot of games. Um, they've, they've had a good run of late. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they'll be pleased with what they've done. I guess it's just for them to build on what they've done so far. Yeah, and I've got here those draws that, that you just mentioned, two of which were at Ipswich and Wickham. Um, does that kind of show what, what pedigree they're operating at? Yeah, I think they're probably punching above their weight for this, the side of the club. They're a bit of a, a yo-yo between the, this division and League Two throughout the years. So, you no, know, they're doing well. They're, 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 make, they're mixing in with the big boys as such. and. Yeah, he's, yeah, as I say, they're a decent side. I, I watched the game when Argyle went there, uh, just around Christmas period, and Argyle were, were far too strong for them. You know, they lacked a bit of, you know, they didn't, they lacked a bit of up front. They didn't have anyone with any that Alfie Mays now come into the yeah. into the four, isn't they? So, I, I think they just looked a bit soft up front. Really, they didn't really have anything to really hurt Argyle, and quite a quite a comfortable victory for Argyle in the end. It was. Do you think there'll be a, a little bit of a difference in that setup now, where they're coming off the back of these two wins in two games? Most definitely, I think. Uh, often may have been they've definitely got a goal threat from what from what I can see and games I've watched them and highlights I've seen them play. So yeah, they'll come here with full of confidence. You know, coming off two good wins, three-one victories in both the last two games I've had. I'll you know, bite against teams that maybe you know you know they should beat really. Yeah. You know, so as I say. It's, but you know, for me, it's all about what Argyle do. I think if Argyle play anything like they can, I think this this should be a victory. Yeah. Well, it's always about what Argyle do, it but is. <laughs> it's it is. They're talking Especially about Argyle TV. <laughs> exactly. But let's have a look at the team's lineup for Cheltenham now. Um, looking at what we've got in front of us, can they cause any dangers to Argyle? I know you've mentioned Alfie May a few times. How much of a threat is he? Yeah, he is a threat, and you know I, I think he's he came from Doncaster. I think he's played 90 odd games with Doncaster, but before that, most of his uh, his time was in, in non-league. Okay. So he, he's at 28 now, so I think he's coming into his, his his peak. So yeah, you would expect him to be. And I look at some of his goals; he's he's a really tidy finisher. Yeah. Um, and I did read somewhere recently that. No, Duff was saying that he's, maybe his attitude wasn't right when he first came to the club. Okay. But now he's knuckling down and he's doing extra stuff and he's, he's the dividends. He's getting he's getting the reward for the extra stuff he's putting in. So yeah. So he'll be a threat definitely. And lo looking at his statistics in particular, goal wise, he's had twelve in the last ten. Do you think that will kind of you know bolster his confidence going into this? If, if that doesn't, nothing will. <laughs> yeah. If I'm honest, I think he scored four in one game. If I'm honest, I think so. That would really help his tally. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who's top goal scorer in the league, but he must be up there. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's some numbers to be fair. So he, he should be full of confidence. Yeah. But say you know that's what Argyle got to do. You got to keep him quiet, and, yeah. and, and uh, I, I'd be fairly confident they could. Yeah. As a as a defensive man, how do the Argyle defence keep him quiet? What kind of things do they need to be looking out for? You know, I I don't think Cheltenham will come here and, and go gung ho. I think they'll be they'll be quite reserved. I, I really mm -hmm. do. So I think just get tight to him. Don't let him turn. He looks he looks he looks to get a shot off really quickly. You know, he seems to have good feet. So I think maybe just getting close to him, not letting him get turn, get shots off, um, and just good communication like they've been done. So I think. Nothing changes. You know, there is good players they play against every week in this division, so yeah. it'll be just more of the same, really. Yeah, and you know, obviously we're here backing Argyle and everything, but it's good to be, you know, aware of what the strengths are in the opposition. So, what kind of strengths do you think Cheltenham might be bringing as a whole that Argyle need to be looking out for? Uh, knowing Duff being a defender himself, they'll be organised defensively. Okay. Um, one hundred percent. He'll wanna. He'll wanna shift. He, he was a hard-working player himself, so he'll wanna go and get his teams organised and make it difficult, and and try and take their opportunity. So. Yeah, but you know the, the, and the one thing I would say about Argyle, and I heard Danny Mayer saying about you know the, the research that Argyle do about teams is always yeah. really good. Okay. So you know, the, you know I think Argyle will be well versed on what what uh, Cheltenham have got to offer. So yeah. So but look, 
as I say, going back to it, it's 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 about what you do in the pitch. Players winning their individual battles, and and I'm sure if Argyle do that, I think they've got the better players. Yeah, and very quickly before we uh, hand you off to join Rob over doing commentary today. First of all, thank you very much Pleasure. for joining us on Argyle TV. Final word: How do you think Argyle are going to get their win today? How are they going to get the win? Yeah, uh, it's not it's not an option like it's no, happening. No, no. <laughs> um, well, I think the two strikers are, are key to that. I think the two strikers can hold the ball up and, and bring people like Mayer into the game. I think he's got two attacking players in the middle of the park with Broom and Mayer. So, you know, that that sort of sort of sends the, the manager's intent. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's just everyone playing seven, eight out of ten. I think naturally then you'll get your result. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, Brian. Pleasure. Thank you for being here this evening. You're free to go and warm up. <laughs> I'll be here for another few minutes longer just freezing in front of you slowly uh, not very long now until kickoff this evening um, before we go any further ahead just want to remind you that you can get in touch with us here on Argyle TV on social media I am on Twitter that is at only one Argyle send me a tweet uh, for those of you who have watched Argyle TV's pre-show before, you will know I like to find out where the furthest Argyle fan in the world is. Perhaps we will have another watcher from the sunny climes of Barbados or Jamaica today. Or perhaps we'll just have someone sat at home somewhere in Plymouth. We'll have a little look. Uh, I actually have, if I can somehow manage to swap my hands, which are numb from the cold i had a little look on youtube earlier because i'm sure there's many of you watching on the actual youtube page as i was earlier this week when i wasn't here and i was at home and uh we've got to give a shout out to some of the people who are in the live chat on our youtube channel uh one of which is peter watts who says i've started watching the argyle tv pre-match just to extend the actual game which is very nice I like to see that um, who else have we got? <laughs> Donald's noticed I'm back. Thank you very much, Donald. Nice to see. You. Uh, David Jarvis saying go on the greens. Um, walrus, who I'm quite a, it's not a picture of a walrus, it's a picture of a dog, but says we're on our way, we're on our way. Uh, and also saying come on you greens. Stephen LaPlante is watching from Florida. Let's go greens. Um, Mr. Nevsky has said spam if you love the greens. I mean, no need to, you can just love the greens. And David Marks is saying, good luck, boys. I reckon 5-0 win to the boys in green tonight. It's ambitious, but we'll take it. Another prediction coming in from Matthew Knight, who's saying 2-0. My prediction is Maya and Broom. And then finally, Marcelo Alberto, who is watching in Brazil. And Edward Watts says, go on, Aaron, up the Argyle. I'll finish with that one. That's a nice one. Right, before I hand over to our lovely Rob and Brian over in the commentary box this evening, it's that time of the evening to remind you about our partner, Uber Eats. So we are delighted to have teamed up with our online food order and delivery service, Uber Eats, for the 21-22 campaign. They have joined the club as an affiliate partner and Uber Eats will be sponsoring our all-new, all-pre-match quiz on the official Argyle app, as well as our Moment of the Month feature, which I'm sure you will have seen on Argyle TV and on the club's social media channels. To kick off that partnership, Argyle fans can download the app and you can receive £10 off your first order when you spend a minimum of £15. All you've got to do is use the code ARGYLE10 when you're ordering. OK, I make it very much almost half past seven, so we're almost ready to go. A reminder for those of you who were watching on YouTube and had your lovely shout outs, head over to pafc.co.uk and you can watch the match. Uh, just change over to Argyle TV. Buy the match pass, it's £10, and you can watch whether you are in the UK or abroad, which is very good news. And you will be guided through this evening's game by none other than Brian McGlinchey and Rob McNichol. That is coming up next. I'll see you at half time.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Argyle TV Live this evening. It's Plymouth Argyle versus Cheltenham Town as we creep ever, ever closer until the end of this season. We're about to start our fantastic light show inside Home Park, and that means we are getting very near to kickoff. We're, well, we're approximately 13 minutes away, so we've still got a, a little bit of time to go. But I'm happy to welcome alongside me Brian McGlinchey. Brian, I hope you can hear me okay. It's very loud in Home Park at the moment, but that's a, that's a good thing, I suppose. The atmosphere's building, and it's another, another huge game for Argyle. Yeah, it's a massive game. Um, you can see the crowds building already. Still 10 minutes to go, so I expect it to be a, a really great atmosphere tonight. I think the team have put in fantastic performances of late, and uh, fingers crossed it's another strong